Hey, everybody. So thank you very much for being here. It's uh, Friday, July 17th, and we're about to dive into a home retreat. <clears throat> and we wanted to offer some Dharma words of encouragement and guidance as we begin. I'd like to bring your attention to a very important aspect of the daily liturgy. This is the five remembrances of the Buddha. I am of the nature to grow old. There is no way to escape growing old. I am of the nature to have ill health. There is no way to escape having ill health. I am of the nature to die. There is no way to escape death. All that is dear to me and everyone I love are of the nature of change. There is no way to escape being separated from them. But my deeds are my closest companions. I am the beneficiary of my deeds. My deeds are the ground on which I stand. Now, when I was uh, several decades younger and just beginning to encounter retreat practice, my life was fully, um, it, it, was, it was in full tilt. Uh, I was studying my chosen profession. I was trying to figure my relationship life out. I had stress with money. I had difficulties with my health from time to time. I had uh, competition from other musicians who could uh, rock harder than I could. Um, I had a whole universe, a whole world system of concern, ambitions, fears, drives, things that repulsed me, things that attracted me, things I didn't care about. But somehow I was lucky enough I had the good karma for, I was able to encounter retreat in Zazen. And what I noticed over time, and it did take time, <laughs> was that no matter when I went to retreat, my life was always in full tilt. There was always exams and girlfriends and bills and gigs and competitions and whatevers every time. And the first time or two you do retreat, it seems like this might be unusual, but after you've done it for several years, you come to see that this is just a feature of life. And for many years, I did my best, but somehow, I managed to carry those stresses and fears and worries and concerns to the temple. I carried them with me to my bunk. I unpacked them and set them there. Uh, but then when it came time for the Zendo, I brought them with me. I sat them on my head. And as Seshin and retreat advanced, I proudly carried my basket of woe and concern and success and triumph and the whole damn thing. Only I didn't know that I was doing that, but I was. And somehow I always felt like there was this level of contact with the, what the abbot was pointing to that was just beyond me. And it was, it was. Because I had brought in masks and filters and costumes that I didn't even know I had. And so even though I had the clothes of a practitioner and in time I learned the correct mannerisms to look 
like a practitioner. I was not. What I was practicing was carrying my crap into the zendo. Remember dad used to say, put down the backpack? Yeah, Roshi would always say, take off the backpack. That was his thing. Roshi had this way of seeing what I could not see. He could see that I still had my mask on and I still had my battle gear and that I was still carrying the world with me, even though we were literally in a monastic cloistered setting. I may as well have been on the subway in the city because in my head and in my heart, I was, but at first, well, I should say the first progress <laughs> beyond the mannerisms and the effect, affect of practice was my body learned how to be where I was. I actually was able to sit in the Zendo and just have my body be in the Zendo. My emotions would still be triggerable and my mind would be racing, but at least my goddamn body was sitting on the cushion and I could be still. And this was actually a major victory. Just to get the meat sack to settle the hell down that much. This was good. But my heart was still pushed and pulled. And so I had not yet unlocked the true freedom. Eventually, the emotions settled, like so much sediment in the water and just kind of landed and dissipated. And so there wasn't so much heat. You know, the heart, the heart is, it's got a lot of heat, you know. Why this? And oh my God, dad, and what the hell are we going to do? And how could they have said this? And you know what? There's plenty of reasons to be feeling that right now. I get it. I really do. But there's nothing new about that. I had plenty of reasons to feel that way a few decades before the last century changed. And if we don't all blow ourselves up, there'll be plenty of reasons to feel that way two decades from now. 200 years from now, 2,000 years from now. And so the heart also, the emotions in time, I began to trust what Roshi was saying and I actually started to drop the care. I was able to cast my care upon the Dharma and upon the practice and upon the retreat and mostly upon Zazen. But still, the mind, <laughs> still thinking, still habit patterns of thought. But eventually those two, the process of Zazen is the process of trusting yourself, really trusting yourself, letting all the plans and all the concerns and all the fears, you let them be. Imagine if you would, that you were a prisoner and you're locked in a cage, some terrible cell. And if you're locked in this cage, in this terrible cell, you're separate from your loved ones and your family, and you wish nothing more than to get out of the goddamn cell. You want your freedom, but you don't have it. You're in this prison 
and you think you're going to be there for a day, but then it turns into 10 days and you think maybe a month and it turns into a year and you think maybe a year and it turns into 10 years and you're still trapped in this stupid cell. And then one day you're out. Okay, you can go. And finally, you can go out and see the sunlight and let your feet carry you where you want to go. And imagine the relief. I think of Nelson Mandela, you know, in prison for 25 goddamn years. <laughs> 25. And then free. Or think of, think of being in debt. You have so much debt, so many bills. You cannot move. Crushing, crushing debt. It seems overwhelming. You cannot pay it off. Every day you're deeply, deeply concerned with this debt. It affects everything, the worry the stress of it, the repercussions of it, the lack of freedom, the sense of helplessness and hopelessness. But then the debtor is forgiven their debt. And the bank says, hey, you know what? You're all right, Joe. Your debts are paid. And suddenly you have no payments anymore. You're free, no debt. Imagine the relief. You finally pay off your student loans or the mortgage. No credit balance anymore, zero. Would you please? How fantastic. No car payments, no mortgage payments, no credit cards, no insurance, all done. Wow. The prisoner is finally free and the debtor has finally got no more expenses. But consider you have a headache. Yeah, you have a headache. Your head aches. That's a headache. <laughs> oh, my head. And you're nauseous. Oh, my tummy and other indescribables. And your body is just painful and nauseous and nauseous and painful. And you want nothing more than to have this pain be gone. If only this headache would stop, if only this nausea would leave me. If only the sleeplessness would dissipate and I could rest. And then it does, and then you're healthy again. And the headache goes away and the nausea is done. And you can eat delicious foods and not have horrible smelly repercussions. So imagine the relief of someone who's in prison and in debt and ill of health, who's living in this imprisoned, debt-ridden, unhealthy setting, painful situation, and suddenly like that, free. Out of prison, out of debt, good health, no pain in the body. How wonderful would that feel? And the Buddha used this exact analogy to describe the process of zazen. He said, regardless, even if you were in a prison and even if you had ill health and even if you were devastated by debt, you could still have the true freedom, the actual freedom that is you can actually take refuge on because after all, your freedoms are not guaranteed. You may find yourself in debt and you will have ill health. But the freedom of Zazen, the freedom of jhana, of samadhi, of equanimity, 
This is a freedom that is beyond any constraint. And so those many decades ago, I would go on retreat with a heart and a mind and a body filled with stress and ambition and loss and the whole damn thing. And I was lucky enough to experience for myself that it's possible to have all of those concerns actually drop away. Drop away body, drop away mind. Mind and body drop away. Whole body, whole mind, whole heart. No mind, no body, no heart, no prison, no debt, no ill health. And so the Buddha encourages us to dig into this inherent freedom, this capacity that we actually have to be free right in the middle of whatever our life looks like, including this stupid pandemic and including stupid racism and including stupid economic collapse and stupid leaders and all of it. There is an immense freedom inside. And the ironic thing is, the thing that's counterintuitive, is that when you and I get in touch with that inner equanimity and we learn how to take off the mask and take off the armor and take off the backpack, and let the body settle and let the heart settle and let the mind settle. Then when we realize then experience that inherent perfection, when it comes time to address the unjust imprisonment and the debts and the ill health and all the calamities that are actually all around us, we're able to do so from compassion. We're able to do so from wisdom because we earned those things by developing the basis of equanimity. This foundational state, this foundational capacity to drop everything and to trust yourself. Now I know that many of us have dear loved ones that are in physical difficulty right now and that we have a lot of real concerns about serious things that need to be taken care of and maybe we can, maybe we cannot. And I'm in no way diminishing the reality of these things. What I'm saying actually is that we can, we can learn to actually do something about them if we can first let go of them. If it happens to be that in the next short period of time, you're at the bedside of someone who's passing away, someone you love. Your ability to be present to that person and that experience has everything to do with how you meet that moment. So let's take it up. Let's give ourselves the gift of taking this day of retreat and always bring yourself back to your Zazen. Bring yourself back to exactly the practice that you're in, exactly in that moment. Dear ones, just for today, just for this day of retreat, let the world go ahead. It will keep spinning, I promise. It, it is it's going to continue. And for you and for I and for all of us to be able to be the bodhisattva that we are, we need to know how to let go of the whole damn thing. Inside, there's a great storehouse of joy and happiness 
and bliss and equanimity and compassion and wisdom. The entry gate is to get your body to settle the hell down for real. You will not have the benefit of a monitor with a big steak watching you. <laughs> You're on, it's on you. All right. But do the thing, damn it. Do the thing. You can do it. We're not sitting on beds of nails or anything crazy. You're just, you're just meditating. You're fine. Do the thing. Sit. Breathe. Pay attention. And most of all, let the fuck go. Let it go. Let the news go. Let the worry go. Let God handle it. Let Buddha handle it. Let gravity keep the earth moving, however you want to think about it. But quit damn thinking about it and sit. No way to escape growing old, really. How about no old age? No way to escape having ill health? How about no ill health? Nature to die? Pfft. No death. Dear to you? Everyone you love? Change? No change. None. But your deeds, they matter. And this deed, this practice, this karma that you're about to engage in, this retreat, is the most auspicious thing you can do. It's the, it's the most sacred thing in your life to be able to deeply encounter yourself and give yourself to yourself and give the universe to the universe. This becomes the seed of great, great blessings and compassion. But I hope you're smarter than I was. I hope you can do it faster than I did. I hope that you can take the damn backpack off, as Roshi used to say. You can let the world handle the world for just a day, just a moment, just an hour, just a breath. And you take care of your practice. When you do this, you find the universe takes care of you. And then when the final bell rings and it's time to drive off the cloister grounds back into the world, you'll be able to do it as a bodhisattva, as a Buddha. Not just another person reacting out of karmic habit patterns. If there's anything the world needs, everybody, that's it. Please take it up. Let's have the evening gata.
We'll do three bows together. Okay, everybody. Um, Taishin, do you want to run down the schedule for tomorrow quickly? Ah, yes. Uh, let's see. So uh, we begin at uh, 7 o'clock. And um, I think we just uh, open up and dive straight into Zazen. And then we follow pretty much the, the standard format for a, uh, for a morning of session is that we'll sit a series of periods. For the people who've been sitting with us in the mornings, uh, but this is their first retreat, please note that there is a block of uh, kinhen or walking meditation in between uh, the first and the second and the second and the third uh, sittings. And then we'll, pee, uh, we'll proceed from there. So if anyone has any questions about the schedule, they can send me an email and uh, I'll help them out. And people have uh, hopefully registered for a slot for a Doksan interview? Uh, yes, um, I imagine a lot of people have. I don't know if there's any open slots left, but there is a link to that document in the, um, in the email that was sent out from the temple. And if you're new and you haven't, uh, you haven't had Doksan before, uh, I do recommend you checking that out. It's a good opportunity to meet with the teachers one-on-one uh, -on -one or two-on-one, -on -one, as it were. Yeah, if there's anybody uh, participating that doesn't have an opportunity, um, can you let Kaishin know and we'll try to find some way to work that out together. Okay, everybody, as much as possible, please try to maintain silence. I know it might not be literally possible. If it is, please do, um, but try to keep the mind of practice going and we'll see you at seven. All right, we'll be closing down the meeting in just a moment. Uh, if anyone needs to touch base with me, I will be online for the next 10 minutes or so. Good night, everyone.